Welcome to Table Talk, the show about beer, board games, and everything else. I'm Rich. And I'm Alex. And this month, we've been talking about communication. communication guys um it's been a fun month so far um alex and i have explored a lot about mm-hmm. communication uh we uh, check out episodes one two and three if you haven't checked them out yet we're drinking some great communication themed beer i am drinking a uh, oatmeal stout from new holland brewery called uh the poet and alex what are you drinking i'm drinking the gizmo brew works beekeeper honey wheat ale winner of the best honey wheat ale uh in 2017 the best honey wheat honey ale. Ale of honey, or sorry, okay. yes, honey honey wheat beer. <clears throat> it won the best honey wheat beer award from the National Honey Board in 2017. Now, mind you, I doubt this beer can is four years old, so this is very fresh. <laughs> uh, but this from, is wait, it, what was the name of that committee? The National Honey Board. The National Honey Board, right there. Okay, I mean that sounds like a pretty biased <laughs> committee as far as, hey, as, come on. as honey beer is concerned. Uh, hey, I mean, hey, they have really sweet critique in anything okay. that they do. Unless of course you yeah. get yourself in a sticky situation and there's no help for you, so. Uh, <laughs> um the the episodes before we talked about a little bit of the history of communication, tech, technology and the evolution of of communication through the years. Um, last episode, we do- we dove into uh, codes and different secret codes um, and our fun. experiences with those, and just some had some fun trying to decipher some codes of our own <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> together. Um, this week, guys, it's all about language. So we're gonna talk we're gonna talk about language specifically, um, which is still still kind of a broad term in and of mm-hmm. itself. Um, mm-hmm. But we're gonna we're gonna kind of break it down for you. Um, I'll go ahead and say right here at the top of the episode, guys, the same thing we say every week. Um, if you are listening, be sure to watch us on YouTube, Table Talk with Rich and Alex. Uh, you can get the full version of the episode there, so all the visual references and everything you'll get there. Obviously, if you're watching, hi. Uh, and you can always oh, just remember to put us in your in your ears if you don't have the opportunity to watch us on YouTube. You can always grab us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, um, and other other podcast uh, platforms as well. So um, let's dive into language. I'm excited about this. Yeah. Um, I I kind of just have some general questions for you, Alex, and just kind of some general thoughts that I think we can we can kind of mull around a little bit. I just wanted to start off with like you personally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do you do you know any other languages other than just English? Just plain american mid midwestern slash southern <laughs> um style english um uh, what what do you know <laughs> anything um well if you were to drop me in a spanish speaking country uh i have been in mexico and i have been in colombia uh if okay. you give me i don't know probably two three days uh i am <laughs> pretty much on the level of like working spanish i could i could get okay. by um which that do you mind I, giving us a, a little taste of of um uh por qué, señor? If, tú necesitas because uh, I said so. uh, in, in <laughs> tú, tú necesitas entender uh, uh me hablo en español yo hablo en español yes. that's uh muy uh, uh well, shoot how do i say confused um it's uh, 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 <clears throat> uh yo hablo en español Especialmente mm. uh, en México o y Colombia, uh, en uh, Bogotá o Ciudad de México. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, me gusta español porque uh, la lengua es más poética de inglés, en, uh, en mi opinión. Um, mm-hmm. okay. uh, porque uh, es... Uh, It is muy... romance language. So, uh, yeah. Sí, sí, sí. Es, mm. es más romancia de, de uh, inglés. Uh, e, um, uh, e, this is this is ten times better than I expected to be honest. So ah, this well, is great. M- muchas, muchas gracias. <laughs> uh, yo yo uso uh, so, 
Um, Uso? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uso, uh, I prefer uh, the I prefer the Usted, by the way. Um, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I'm working on it. All right. Uh, yo, uh, 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 Usar. Uso. Uh, to all you Spanish speaking listeners out there, we we apologize and we thank you for your patience. <laughs> Duolingo es muy excelente para practicar uh, mucho. Um, uh, yo espero hablar en español fluente uh, de mi cumpleaños de 40 años. AKA, I want to cool. be fluent cool. by. I want to be fluent by 40. By so 40. I got, okay. I got about uh, six ish years left to go. Okay. I'll, I'll be 40. That's very in good. Six that years. Was, honestly, that's very good. I'm, I've been, I've always guys. been a lot better at um, comprehending it than I have mm-hmm. been at actually speaking it. Cause I could understand what you're saying, um, yeah. but I didn't, like, I, I would, would not have thought to use those words or what those words were. <laughs> I, um, uh, yeah. I, you know, the thing that changed my life, other than going to a Spanish speaking country, Mexico City, mm-hmm. two years ago, which is an amazing, like, I, I love that city and I, I can't wait to go back. Um, it was talking to the, to the cabbies or the, the, well, the Uber drivers technically that we, that we were, uh, that we had drive around. And because it was a group of friends of mine and my, my wife and I, we all went, um, at times it was just, you know, packed to the gills. So I would sit in shotgun and, and eventually it's like, all right, at some point I got to talk to these guys, even if it's just like, you know, light conversation because right. I, right. uh, and, and for those of you guys who are trying to speak another language, you know, mm-hmm. that there's a really big difference about speaking that language in the United States compared to actually going to a, a country where yeah. it only speaks that language. Like you yeah. have to speak that language or you starve or whatever. Right. Um, right. And when I got back to the States uh, after that trip, I, I, the bug bit me to really just really like, okay, I need to learn. It's less so about the language and more the confidence in trying to talk out loud and knowing that you could make mistakes. Um, right. So I ended up. Yeah, uh, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. I ended up volunteering for Duolingo for a time until the pandemic where we would meet. I don't know. I think it was once every two weeks, um, and we meet at a uh, actually it was a bar above a grocery store, uh, Whole Foods in Brooklyn. That was a lot of fun. Um, but we would meet for about I don't know hour and a half, um, and people of all experiences, ages, types would come in, and we just talk in Spanish and try. Um, nice. I Wait, which which often, Whole Foods in Brooklyn? It's the one. It's the one in Gowanus on third on third and third. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a really cool spot. I didn't know um, there was a bar up there. Yeah, it's it's called the roof. Uh, at least it was still existing okay. before the pandemic. Haven't been back since. Um, gotcha. But uh, okay. yeah, really cool spot. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'd we'd meet there every two weeks and and really talk through. Uh, so I've really took it upon myself. I one of my buddies, um, my close friends, uh, shout out to Bumani uh, on on the call. Uh, he gave me uh, the line, "The Witch in the Wardrobe" in Spanish. Um, so my goal is to eventually be able to read in spanish because i figure a kid's book that's familiar to me i know the story you know, yeah the, the words aren't you can kind difficult. of start piecing it together a little bit yeah. better yeah you can start to get it together um that's cool is, yeah it's fun it's a lot of fun i had no idea that you were you're i mean that you were so dedicated to that that's that's really interesting i don't know if dedicated is the right word right now um it, it, well sorry that's i just use that word because you're obviously more dedicated than i am to <laughs> to, to learning uh another language well, thank um, you thank you yeah i yeah. Uh, i mean you seem very purposeful about it i mean you put thought into it like you've you've i mean it's not like you just you're not like me where like i studied it but like i didn't i didn't it, i didn't take it in because i didn't <laughs> care <laughs> um it was just like it was just another language I had to I had to pass so that I could get my degree. <laughs> so you I, actually I, seem to yeah. be putting effort into it. <laughs> so that's that's why that's what I, where I'm coming from at least. Well, so, thank you. I yeah. I I I think what first really started my interest in doing this. Um, and I don't know if you ever had a situation where like like especially like if you're um watching a movie that's not in English and it's but the mother tongue is still spoken you know whatever language. Uh, for yeah. instance, Parasite is in Korean. Um, hmm. South Korean film, very very good. Uh, and I always find it fascinating when you get a moment of humor that is not in your culture or language, and yet you hmm. you're like, oh, that's funny, and you and you start laughing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll never forget when I was a hmm. tour guide 
it was such an interesting thing about language about who would laugh at what because mm. Australians I, I I felt like and I was not expecting this going into the job as a tour guide I, I realized as um, being an American on a humor standpoint what was so fascinating to me is that I think that I've noticed anyway, is that the two countries that are the most similar to us in humor and in the cadence of how we give that humor is Australia mm -hmm. and South Korea. And hmm. I think those, like, and us, I feel like us three are actually the most similar. We're like the Brits, we definitely, you know, share a lot of history and language and humor and that kind of thing. Um, but right. often the, the humor uh, for British is very dry. It's a and different delivery. It's yeah. a different delivery in which um, I remember hearing stories that the office, the original office that was um, mm -hmm. uh, with Rick, with Ricky the Gervais, TV show, yeah, 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 they, yeah the with office. Ricky Gervais, it was considered mm -hmm. like too uh, dry yeah. for American yeah. audiences, and that's why they ended up redoing mm -hmm. it, especially with Carell. Um, yeah, and um, so it's it's interesting, kind of the language yeah. aspects. Anyway, that's that's why I'm interested in it. How that whole you? transition, and it is interesting that that comes up in a language conversation too, because it's the mm -hmm. same language. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's yeah, it's the same language, but it is a different language. Um, when you when you look beyond just the words that we use, even, you don't even have to look be, work behind. Be, you don't have to look beyond the words that we use, uh, really, because we do use words differently. Mm -hmm. um, and this is true with any English speaking nation or any english speaking region mm -hmm. obviously uh so i mean we can talk about differences between i mean i've i've spent my childhood most of my uh childhood in the midwest um and then i've i've, I've really only spent my time in the northern states i mean you've mm -hmm. had at least some experience in the in like a southern type of atmosphere like do you have do you notice any key differences with like the way we use language between like 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 between the Midwest and like the more southern uh states? Um now that you're a, living in uh that's a, that's a good know, North question. Carolina and grew up in Virginia? Yeah. Um the thing that I've noticed in particular about uh the old uh, about England and and in the south is that there's these very interesting inflections about hinting at something without actually being on the nose right like you're like for instance one yeah. of the classic lines is like if if uh if you if you think that something is if you think someone is essentially being foolish you can say like oh bless his heart or something like that right right like, yeah you bless say it in heart. sort of this like clever like nicety um and mm -hmm. it's and it's shrewd but it's not up front um mm -hmm. and if there's one thing that's fascinatingly captivating about England and the English language and about books like by Jane Austen or, or Charles Dickens or, or any number of these great authors, um, mm -hmm. Chesterton, Wells, you know, et cetera, um, is that you, I think the reason why England in particular has such a rich history of literature is because that the language itself is about figuring out how to talk around something without approaching yeah. it directly. <laughs> but after talking around it, you kind of get the nuance. You're yeah. like, okay, yeah, you get what I mean? Yeah. You know, yeah, get what I mean? nuance. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, just and beating the, around the bush completely. Right. Into, exactly. Yeah, where where yeah. like that is one thing. Um, at least in the southern culture, I've seen is kind of the classic instance is like that you essentially are like being, you know, yeah, not even well. It, it can be passive aggressive depending, but you can't um, just come out outright and say it. And right. yeah, which and which, going from that culture to <laughs> New, York New York City, <laughs> yeah, which is like if you talk around anything, they will run you over. Yeah, um, it's like spit it out. <laughs> yeah, what, what, what are you saying, man? Um, I will. I will say I have always appreciated the frankness of New Yorkers, and I think that they have been dealt an unfair hand of cultural stereotype in that uh, they are deemed as very, being very unkind and unwelcoming. I actually mm -hmm. disagree in that I think that. Yeah, I do too. I, yeah. I think New Yorkers are actually some of, and this may sound absolutely bizarre to people listening. I think that New York, specifically people from New York City, are actually some of the most kind people when it comes to practical either advice, either being helpful, or um, you know, essentially just like you know, giving you the the advantage of letting you know what they think. 
Yeah, um, putting it out there. Yeah, right. Which is like, hey, yeah. they could say they hate your guts, but at least right. you know. I mean, it's it's like anything, though. I mean, you get the good and the bad of of anything. Oh, yeah. Um, and yeah. I've experienced that. You know, when I, I don't know. I mean, I've I've been to the I've, I've been to the South. I've experienced Southern hospitality. O- oh, yeah. Obviously, like I've I've experienced that, and that's fun. <laughs> I've also experienced kind of that Southern, like, we're kind of digging at you, but we're not really, like, it's it's in a way that they think I'm not really picking up on it, but they know that other people are type of right. uh, it's, it's, conversation. It's, it's the, the code of criticism, yeah. Yeah. Um, but just like that, just like New York, right? I've, I've definitely run into, like, people will just say, like, people were just kind of be like, hey, like, like let's go. You know, like, and they're, they'll just kind of put it out there. And it's kind of this earnestness that kind of comes out like, ah, oh, what? Ah, ah, ah. You know, like, it's kind yeah. of like, 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 let's go. I mean, what are you going to do? I'm going to do this. Like, you know, that, that type of conversation is kind of just all there, you know, and it's like, oh, <laughs> okay, like, let's make a decision, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Let's, let's yeah. go. But then you also get the, you know, I love, I love, I, I I shouldn't say I love this, but I mean, I've had plenty of arguments with New Yorkers and native New Yorkers too, while I was there, um, where it's just nonsense, really. It's just, it's just talking in circles and it's like, it's more <laughs> of just like this, this big intimidation show too. Yep. So it's, um, so yeah, not, not to speak badly on native New Yorkers about that, but I, I had plenty of positive experiences with, with with both this, you know, Southern culture and and New York and Eastern culture in general. The thing that I think people often forget, especially if you are not from the East Coast, is that the East Coast was originally founded as 13 separate quote unquote colonies. But let's be honest, there were 13 different countries, like, Mm -hmm. like not, not in the standard, like sovereign nation as we would think. It's more just like people would call themselves Virginian and they literally Mm -hmm. meant like no, no, no. This is this is my place. I don't go to Massachusetts. Like Virginia is my yeah. This is my country. This is my home. Right. Um, right. Whereas once when you get to like, um, um, well, heck, you can go to California, and it's it's different. It does change. Like the difference between Fresno and Bakersfield is very different from San Francisco or L.A. or Santa Barbara. But at the same mm-hmm. time, like it's still it it feels like okay. The culture feels it, yeah. It, it feels a little more Molded, um, yeah together. uniform right yeah. Um, I do like that aspect of conversation when it comes to language. It's all the same language. And it's interesting. It's just interesting how it's perceived differently and used differently in different areas of not only our country, mm-hmm. but also different countries that use the same language, right? Yep. Um, I had this whole <laughs> I had this whole thing set up with um with Australian um uh English because I love Aussie man reviews. Ozzy man, if you are out there um, watching this show, thank you. I love your I love your channel. It's great. It, the content is amazing, and honestly, I wish I could say I I liked it for, <laughs> for I mean I I like it for the content, but I mean obviously I just love listening to an Australian man speak and <laughs> just make jokes because it's hilarious. I just love the verbiage. I love the the way that words are put together um english english words even though they don't sound english um uh they're put together i actually pulled up some some kind of aussie uh type of phrases and and words if 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 you don't mind me sharing um the first one i wanted to look up was fair dinkum have you heard this before no so they'll say like, "Oh, that was a fair dinkum uh, swing." I talk about like baseball, but oh, a fair dinkum or whatever. I don't know. I I don't even know how to use it correctly. Um, the <laughs> the definition uh, is it is an Australian term mm-hmm. used to emphasize or seek confirmation of the uh, genuineness or truth of something. Um, so let's uh, sorry, fair dinkum swing doesn't make any sense. Then uh, let's say it's like a. Like somebody tries to jump over a fence, and then, oh, that was a fair dinkum jump. Like it was an honest jump. Like it was <laughs> genuine, um, <laughs> genuine. Like I, I don't know. That's probably a wrong use of it as well. I don't know. Ah, honestly. that's a that's it's a fair. A that's a fair word. dinkum way to earn employment. <laughs> there you go. Gen- yeah, that's a much better example than anything else that I said. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop um, that during work tomorrow. Uh, yeah, and, and see fair if dinkum. anybody save it. <laughs> Fair dinkum. And if you're Australian, <laughs> please 
please feel free to comment on how horribly I, I used that, that <laughs> phrase uh, as an example. Yeah. Um, just some other other examples. I mean, we all know what the Barbie is. The Barbie is the barbecue. Uh, we've all heard shrimp on the Barbie, Barbie. before. Yep. Um, I didn't know. Basically, I mean, <laughs> it's basically like they just take words and they just shrink them down and they just put O at the end of it. Uh, so instead of saying afternoon, they say Arvo. Have you heard that before? Mm, no, no. Arvo. Um, <laughs> a liquor store is a bottle-o. Um, bottle-o. Yeah, chockers means that they're full, I guess. <laughs> um, oh, man, I'm chockers. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great? Um, sorry, fair dinkum, I guess, means true, real, genuine. I guess that, I guess that is what that means. Can um, you be dinkum chockers? <laughs> Yeah, I'm truly fair, full. Fair, I'm truly fair full. dinkum chockers right I'm now. Fair dinkum chockers. Oh, you're truly full? Yes, <laughs> yeah. I've had three yeah. servings. Thank you. <laughs> a mosquito is a mozzie. Um, I like that. Ripper means really great. Um, Ripper, I've heard um, that before. There's some in- inappropriate terms I'm not going to read. Um, servo, which is a gas station. And it's just this whole, I mean, <laughs> we have about we have about 50 of these that I could go through. I'm not going to go through all of them, but... It's just interesting. Like there's this whole other language that's been created, which is honestly, when it comes down to it, <laughs> sorry, I'm going to use this one utility vehicle or pickup truck is called a Ute. I mean, it's literally just, it's kind of like texting. Like they just kind of like, yeah, just knock it down, which is fun. But it's something about the combination of that approach to language and the accent that just, it cracks me up whenever I don't know. There's some like I. It's not even like they don't even make a joke. They just say like a basic sentence, and I'm like, that's hilarious. Well, you know, my favorite part is too is is uh, looking up YouTube videos of uh, other people who interpret what Americans say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I'm like, it's weird. Like, I don't think I have an accent, but I know to you know, a, f- a friend of mine in Croatia, a friend of mine in South Africa, a friend of mine in Australia, like if they talk to me, I'm like, yeah, no, I, I sound, I sound probably like a, more of a Southern American than I, than I realize. Um, which I'm fine with that. I've, I've, you know, accept that about myself. I didn't celebrate. put it together when I first met you. That's for sure. I didn't, where I live I regionally, it gets a little bit, uh, it's toned down. Um, though I think it just depends on, sometimes who I'm with and no doubt, you know, 10 years down the line, if I'm living in Raleigh, North Carolina, I right. have a feeling I'll sound a yeah. more Southern. Let's fast forward 10 years from now. I can't understand a word you're saying. Table talk has hey. officially been <laughs> abandoned because <laughs> Rich and Alex don't know what they're talking about anymore. Um, uh, table talk hey, is being uh, no renamed. different from when they started. <laughs> yep. Uh, renamed into tower of Babel talk. <laughs> Oh man. Um, um mm. well here, let me let me ask you this. Um are there any languages out there um obviously you're very very fluent with Spanish. I, I shouldn't say fluent, I guess maybe maybe near fluent with Working Spanish. Working fluency. Yeah. 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 Um con- under construction fluency. Yeah, there you go. Um and is there anything any other language anything else on the horizon that you you want to tackle anything that you wish you knew that like if there was a language that you could just you could just instantly speak it. Uh, what what do you what would you want that to be? Uh, f- well, I I have friends in the Netherlands, and I wouldn't mind just being able to speak Dutch at the drop of a hat, just for the sake of for friendship. I think that'd be fun. Okay. Um, for yeah. the sake of beauty, in terms of That's like a fair dinkum, response. fair fair dinkum response. Yeah. Um, <laughs> fair dinkum. So interesting. Uh, I know it's great. <laughs> the the other the other language I've been thinking long and hard about that I would love to one day learn, um, but I have to figure out Spanish first because if I learned this other language before, it would just flat out confuse me. I really want to learn Portuguese. Portuguese is, I think, the most beautiful language I have ever heard. Like just as a like, hmm. um, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure there's other languages, and of course. It's not objective what I just said. It's very subjective, but at least for me, it has that right. that has that uh, almost that flowiness that uh, that that both Spanish but especially French have. Um, but Portuguese feels a lot more tactile than French. French, mm-hmm. uh, I get a little like it's beautiful, but it gets a little kind of like why is there an X there? Why is there a U? Where does that come in? <laughs> yeah. 
do I save yeah. the D? Do I not? I don't. I don't quite understand how like reading and talking of it feel like two different things. Um, whereas for whatever reason with Portuguese, uh, and it and what got me was watching City of God, that that great uh, drama that was made in um, was filmed in Rio de Janeiro. I forget. It was like two thousands, I think. But um, that movie is marvelous. It is very difficult it talks about gang life but it's it's so well made but i remember hearing it and thinking oh my gosh it sounds like they're singing um uh hmm. in terms of just it the, the it had a had a cadence to it that i had never really heard yeah. before in any other language um and it felt mm-hmm. a little more um kind of a little more freeform than spanish in a way it didn't feel tied to some of the the the, the masculine feminine rules as much as it is and very well might be i just i didn't understand it enough to really see whether or not it does um long long per usual long answer uh portuguese yeah, portuguese for its beauty dutch for the practicality of being there's able to no show if it's not friends. a long answer <laughs> it's, it's gotta yeah, so right. i'm very thankful for your long answers well, um thank so you, por- portuguese and so dutch for personal reasons and, yep. and portuguese for just the the sound of the yep. of the of the language as well, a whole and then and the i cadence. can travel on both continents north and south america without any problems and talk to anybody portuguese and spanish and english boom got it made yeah um (laughs) i like that i like that a lot i yeah i was i don't know if if i was going to answer my own question i would say um i mean it is it's the same language i would want to basically want to be able to speak like an australian uh because i feel like that would just be (laughs) so fun that's a fair Um, dinkum response it's a, yeah, it's a fair dinkum uh, thought there. Um, so that was kind of at the top of my list. Um, I mean, obviously, I'd love to speak every language, but that's kind of a cop out. Um, if I really had to choose, I'd probably pick a fake language. <laughs> probably. What, we're talking would, like uh, 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 Valerian. <laughs> yeah, and probably not. Probably not Elvish or anything like that. It. I would. I think it'd be funny to like speak something just to just to know like just to know how to speak like uh cuz duel <laughs> which is like the like the dwarvish language in, in <laughs> Tolkien's uh Middle Earth like, yeah, like a non a non popular language that yeah like has a language but yeah like right, not yeah. many people realize yeah that's funny. yeah not not necessarily so it's not a real language but it's not even like the popular language within wait. the fictional world within it <laughs> what it exists wait, wait, what's, what's the dwarvish <laughs> language called it's cause it's like cause duel or uh, so k h u z d u l it's a fictional language created by J R R Tolkien one of the languages of Middle Earth specifically the secret and private language of the dwarves. You know, one of my favorite my favorite thing is like even the name strikes me as argumentative, like I like or or like defensive, like just like yeah. cause duel. I don't yeah. necessarily cause. cause like, what language cut? do you speak? Cause duel. Cause duel. Oh, I, I don't want to duel with that guy. Um, I'm yeah. out. No. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. I'm I'm probably mispronouncing it too, but yeah. Um, speak being able to speak some random language that only a whole bunch of bearded dwarves um, speak. A spring so, out of holes of the ground. If, if for some, <laughs> <laughs> they are so alike in, in voice and appearance, they are often mistaken for dwarf men. <laughs> uh, what's the That's other because one? Because uh, my axe s- uh, was implanted uh, right, it, in it, its it nervous, nervous system. system. <laughs> Us dwarves of our natural sprinters, very dangerous over short distances. Yeah, right. Uh, oh man, anyway. Gimli. Gimli, um, my man. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I, there's something that just, <laughs> just in the off chance that that world does somehow exist in some type of realm, and I know how to speak that language, I'm going to be very useful in that situation. <laughs> all right. Um, or if all the other yeah. languages in the world get wiped out, and the only language that's left is Kazdul, you'd be like, all right, yeah, guys. right. Yeah, the we'll only page one. the only go. thing that remains is just a copy, like just like that page copy of like the Silmarillion, um, where there's like this printed out version of of that language, and they're just like, this is how they spoke. <laughs> guys, guys, and I this could is be the like, of the world. No, no, no. Sure. <laughs> I never liked English anyway. Let's just do this. Um, I looked into a specific language that is a very unique sounding language. Um. I have a like an audio version I can play for you if you want. 
Uh, um, yeah, let's let's hear it. And, and I'm trying to it? decipher what language it is. Um, yes. You ready for this? Let's do it. All right. So this is this is a language. Um, I'm going to admit I have no idea what is being said here. Um, but this is the language. Okay. Can you guess that language? <laughs> uh, I think it is um, a microwave. Yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> ding, <Microwave>. ding, ding, ding. <laughs> it's two it. microwaves talking to each other before Facebook unplugs them. Unplugs them. them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would guess those are bottlenose dolphins at like SeaWorld or something. All right. So I chose dolphins for a specific reason. Um and just to kind of dive into a different world of language, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't know this about dolphins until I researched this. Have you thought about how dolphins... Because obviously we all know echolocation is a thing. We all learned this in grade school. <laughs> Hopefully we all learned this in grade school. Echolocation is a thing, right? Bats, dolphins, it's sound waves, right? So somehow these creatures are able to basically bounce sound off of objects and then visualize them Mm -hmm. um, based off of what bounces back to them. Mm -hmm. So basically the way, so that makes sense to me. Like, I mean, it doesn't make sense, but at the same time it makes sense, right? There's sound waves. So those sound waves are coming back to them. They have specific um, sensibilities to basically visualize that um, as based off of how those sound waves respond. That makes sense. I did not know this. So dolphins will. So let's say a dolphin is um, swimming through swimming through the ocean, right? And they come across a submarine in the ocean, and they bounce their sound waves off of it, and the sound waves bounce back, and it says submarine, whatever that means in dolphin language, right? <laughs> says submarine. <laughs> yep. Dolphins can then go to a, swim away from the submarine, go far away. Go to another dolphin and recreate the sound waves that they got back from the submarine and then send them to another dolphin. Recreate it so that they can tell another dolphin that there's a submarine over there. Interesting. I mean, that doesn't surprise me. That's that's fascinating. Isn't that crazy? That. It's yeah, like crazy. me being able to like look at this, like look at my, com- I'm looking at this can, right? But you can't see right. it. Right. And then I can basically look at you and I can put the image of this can in your head. Yeah, it's basically the matrix. <laughs> Isn't that nuts? Well, and I'll, that's, I'll like I'll no yeah. why didn't I <laughs> it's just so interesting. Like that's that that is just now hitting me at age thirty one <laughs> that, <laughs> that dolphins can take sound waves of Im, like of images and transport them and communicate them to other dolphins. It's so interesting I, to me. I think that it is a it is a fascinating world to realize that like Animals in particular <clears throat> have language. Not to go back to the superhero episode, but that's the thing I find so fascinating about people like Aquaman as a yeah. character is because it's like, dude, you could learn a lot. Like considering, and especially when you think about the ocean, of how little we actually know. Like no one no one has actually documented a sperm whale taking on a, squ- a giant squid. And the only reason why mm. we know that is because of the scars on the whale's faces and the you know the chewed up bits of calamari that are strewn across you know whatever ocean, um, yeah. But no one's actually seen the recording of it, so like it's still mm-hmm. based on a on a a, a well founded you know scientific approach of like yeah this is what yeah. happens. But it's just yeah. fascinating to me that yeah we we've known forever that that's what they eat that the sperm whales in particular eat giant squid. We just haven't seen it yet. Um, and yet we also know that like these things communicate and they have memories and they have specific things that they'll do. Like I've, I've also been reading um, apparently whales have like cultural nuances even to where the point where, like mm. a certain pod of killer whales would do this one thing in this particular region, but then like 15 miles up, you know, up, up water, up, yeah, north. Um, up current? The, the, <laughs> This way, up tide. Yeah, um, sure. Uh, 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 Franca, or whatever the Australian <laughs> word is. Um, 
Um, that is not fair dinkum. <laughs> fair dinkum. Thank you. <laughs> There'll be much more fair dinkum about it. Um, no, they they basically so, they'll they'll we're do a whole. Butchering this. I know. <laughs> well, they'll do. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, guys in Australia. We we don't we mean no harm. Um, but they'll they'll uh, 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 you know the the whales will do something like they'll do the same action but do it in an entirely different different manner. way. Yeah. Uh, a big thing huh. is mainly hunting techniques, but like. So it's like it, a pod mentality. Like, kind of. Yeah. Okay. Which like to me, I'm thinking it's like, look, like obviously like we're always floored when like, whoa, a gorilla can do sign language. Like a right. gorilla. Like, there have been like, I think Coco was, was the most Cocoa. famous. Like yep. where like Coco could legitimately communicate mm-hmm. with his caretaker or her caretakers. And yeah, her. you realize you're like, whoa, like this creature processes emotion knows mm-hmm. what sorrow is knows what feeling happy is knows how to identify what a cat is and it's mm-hmm. her name and your name is this and my name is this like the whole mm-hmm. like concept of planet of the apes isn't all that far off in some respects where it's like mm-hmm. yeah you know these animals do have like certain ways they communicate it's just in a different manner that we would think mm-hmm. um and obviously with varying levels of intelligence ants communicate right. to each other but my guess is it's mostly just like, all right, you got the food? Great. All right, we're moving. Yeah. Oh, kid, hit, hit over the sand hill. Or the sand hill. All right. We're going to go pick up. We're going to make more. We're going to make Hi, another Steve. home. Yep. Hey. Hey, Fred. Say hello to the kids. Yeah, no problem. Are your wife doing okay? <laughs> but like... Um, <laughs> there's food over there? Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, there's some... Uh, Follow the some, line. Follow the line. Yeah, there's some great Cracker Jacks over there on the third row of the baseball field. <laughs> Um. <laughs> anyway, uh, but I I think a lot about the 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 language the language aspect and the and the realization that like, yeah, like there's human. Or, 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 we live in a world that there's communication happening all over the place. Uh, it's just yeah. that often we don't either hear it. Uh, like yeah. elephants can transmit at certain frequencies that like are so low yeah, that it's like you can't that even too. hear. Yeah. yeah, that that is super bizarre to me. Anyway, uh, I have mine. Yeah, what's your what's your unique sounding language? I'm interested. This is this is a a uh, yeah. See if you can guess. All right. Just give me a thumbs up if you can hear. Okay. Hey, the location we go scar, the cool of doubt. Nice she, the meal you are quick murang, don't take out. The stomach of cross cross is on the cross. Then end of shining assy. Okay, so she, how we go like a this is one of my favorite languages on the planet. Got the clicks. Um, I'm gonna have to show you. I'm gonna have to share with you because it's a guy. He's he's yeah, telling a story, and he's yeah. very like he's an incredible storyteller. Like I I don't know what he's talking about, but I sort of do just based on like how he's actually telling the story. And he yeah, guesses let's, as to yeah, and he guesses. Yeah, um, I, I'm guessing African based uh, language. Correct. Am I okay. on the Correct. right continent? Okay, you are on the right um, continent. I don't. I mean, I don't know. I don't know beyond that. I um. I'm gonna guess. I mean, I don't. I don't. I guess I don't. I don't know where to go from there. Okay. Ghana. <laughs> well, well, not not. Um, it's further south. Uh, okay. So this is in a uh, remote country uh, called Namibia. It's one of the least densely populated countries on the planet, and it also has one of the world's oldest deserts, which is very fascinating to me. Um, hmm. That it, essentially the desert like borders the ocean. Um, it's it's like a, I think it's like a World Heritage site and stuff. So this is um, a, a old dialect of what is known, I believe, as the San people, S A N, um, in Namibia, and it is the Bushman click language. Um, mm-hmm. At least this is how the this particular subscriber, or sorry, this YouTuber uh, has. I got to know this through a movie that was filmed in South Africa called "The Gods Must Be Crazy." Um, and it's about this Bushman guy who finds a Coke bottle. Um, and it's how the modern world essentially turns his village upside down in good and in bad ways. Um, and it's an interesting kind of uh, social commentary about like, well, if it's modern, is it good? You know, you know, what's mm-hmm. it mean kind of thing. Um, 
it's an incredible movie, but like that introduced me to the whole thing of like it's fascinating that the human mouth can use clicks as a language. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. And like it's a thing. And like there's certain depending on which um uh, area in particular of Africa, depending, you know, it could be South Africa, it could be uh, uh Namibia, different uh, different areas around the Kalahari Desert. Like it's interesting like even the even the clicks have dialects. So like there's mm-hmm. different depending on which region you are, how you use the clicks is also different. Yeah. Depending on the click, it's not have just different like, meanings and yeah. different different ways that they're used. If you have the video, um, go ahead and share it because I would yeah, I would sure. love to to see it. Yeah, this dude who's uh, being recorded, he's such a good storyteller. I love his expression. Does it show what he's saying? No. No. That's so cool. like, I have no idea what he's saying, but I'm so into what he's saying. I know, right? <laughs> I'm entranced. I have no idea what's happening. Uh, I know somebody went to sleep and then looked up. <laughs> That's pretty much all. That's so cool. This is from the... That is cool. That is really cool. I like that That's a lot. That's one of my favorites. It's one that yeah. I just probably will never understand in my life, but I absolutely admire and love it. It's cool. Yeah. Um, I also I, I thought we could play a game, um, a Google Translate game. I'm gonna type a word, an English word, um, in Google Translate. Let me see if you can try and guess out. what <laughs> the word is. Here we go. Well, okay, we're doing Korean. Boy. Okay. See. Um, we do something other than hello. <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah. Annyeong. One more time. Annyeong. <laughs> This is so entertaining. Um, is it one word? One word. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Uh, All right. Goodbye I... in Korean is. Okay. There you go. I got. I got one. This is in Russian. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Меня зовут Александр. One more time. Alexander. Kind of put yourself in the moment of St. Petersburg or okay, Moscow yeah, 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 or, yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anastasia, okay, or Norilsk, there. yeah, blessed Norilsk. All right, here we go. Ready? Меня зовут Александр. Меня зовут Александр. Let's go grab a beer. <laughs> well, if my name is Alexander, means let's go grab a beer. Then. Меня зовут Александр. Sure. Yeah, hey, I should have picked up on that. Xander. Yeah. Yeah. So this is Icelandic. It's one okay. word. Fishkur. Fishkur. One more time. Fishkur. Fishkur. Is it a very basic word? Like yeah. like is it give you a it, hint? It's like um, a cat dog. Yes. Friend. Yeah, it's okay. a very okay. b- right. very basic word. Yes. One more time. Fish. Uh, fish. <laughs> yeah, it's a fish. <laughs> it's a lot more similar to the real word than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> All right. I like that. Um, okay, I got one. Here we go. You ready? Macedonian. Ready. Delphin. Delphin. Macedonian. Do it again. Delphin. Is it Milfine? Delphine. 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 Um, rain, reindeer? <laughs> you got the animal part right. Is it deer? Nope. Oh, it's an ant. Oh, sorry. It's an animal. Um, Just, I'm going to repeat it for a while. Delphine. 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 Del- Delphine. <laughs> Delphine, 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 Delphine,
It's a D E L D E L F I N, but the Macedonian, I don't understand the the letters. All right, you ready? I got I got one uh, queued up here. Um, it is Turkish. Okay. Okay. All right. You're gonna get this one. I I think you will. If it's rich, CV bir şapka takıp hieroglif okumaya çalışırken burnunu karıştırdığında komik görünüyor. <laughs> Dude, that's you need like to hear ask, it again. <laughs> that's like asking a kid to take a drink out of a water fountain and then revealing it's a fire hose and turning it on straight, you know, full throttle. Thanks a lot. One more time. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, here we go. One more time. But you only Raise get one. <laughs> Rich, CV bir şapka takıp hieroglif okumaya çalışırken <laughs> burnunu karıştırdığında komik görünüyor. All right, so if I'm able to talk to you and you're able to talk to me, we should make a podcast together and call it Bruin Boards? It's very close. It's What very it? close. Uh, Rich looks funny when he wears a pointy hat and picks his nose while <laughs> attempting to read hieroglyphics. <laughs> You know, that sounds like straight out of uh, Paradise Lost or some classic novel. Yeah, that's great. Well, that was a fun game. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed that. The Google Translate game, ladies and gentlemen. Just moving forward, I mean, other things that we're looking at language-wise. Um, I mean, we had talked about it a little bit before. We, we kind of dipped into, I think, episode one. We talked a little bit about sign language a little bit. Um, and... I mean, diff- different types of language, like sign language, body language, uh, Braille. Um, yeah, I mean, just different different other types of language beyond just like the verbal language. Um, sign language specifically, I've always kind of wondered, because <laughs> there always seems to be that, that person up on the stage that's always kind of translating, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. I've always wondered how they keep up. <laughs> like it's... Like it seems like the person's just talking like normal. It seems like a lot to translate and like a lot to do at, at once. Um, and I've always wondered because I've never been in that position where I've been talking and somebody's been translating everything I'm saying mm-hmm. visibly, like mm-hmm. like per, in a performance almost to everybody mm-hmm. else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, does it ever goes through your mind like that? Like, I wonder. Like, oh, that's what that means. Like, that's what. Like, like I've never like if you're talking and you're like. And then uh, somebody got hit by a bus, <laughs> and then and then the the sign language person just goes, nah, nah, nah. you know, and you're like, oh, that's what that means in sign language. <laughs> you know, it's funny you should say that. I took a sign language class in college. And oh, did you? I did for a Wait, semester. You're so you're so lingual. Well, I like this. Oh, thank you. I'm learning um, so much about you. Hey, I'm a storyteller. I figured there's multiple ways to do it. Um, Uh, What I find so fascinating about sign language is that it's the only language I've ever witnessed in which the facial emotions are directly tied to the expression of the language's quality. Mm. So, like, you can't just do this for being sick. You literally are like, like this, like doing that. And as an extrovert person that excels, for those of you guys who have dealt with my um, side of the podcast, in the show, you know that I use my hands a lot, and you probably <laughs> every now and again see these gestures in the frame. Sorry, it's just it's just what I do. Um, what was fascinating was watching how sign language uses taps. It taps into both language itself, but also the the like the outward expression of language, mm-hmm. um, which I think is like a whole different level of of how communication is. For those of you guys who uh, saw um, the Sound of Metal this year, an excellent uh, film. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a deaf community within the um, uh, film in which you kind of get to see, uh, you know, how they interact and communicate, but they do it in a way which is really interesting where they, they show breakfast, right? And they show how breakfast is done and, and you obviously still have to eat with your hands, but you also communicate with your hands. So one thing they do that's frankly quite brilliant is they show people, you know, they're doing this, but they're animated and they're doing the, you know, they're hitting the table and they're, you know, kind of doing the thing and, um, and the thing is, is mm-hmm. they'll, they'll show it in wide shot without any music. So literally, you just hear the table banging and them doing their thing and, they're, and you know, doing the, the language. Huh. Um, but what you realize is, like, it's without the kind of the clamor and, and clanging that you'd usually get in, you know, at a diner where, like, everyone has that low murmur sound where you can't really hear anybody. So then everyone starts right. shouting and then everyone's angry and then everyone leaves because no one can hear each <laughs> other. Um, 
Whereas yeah. like with sign language, it's it's a fascinating blend of both. Like there is noise associated with it, but it's also a lot of has to do with facial uh, expressions. Um, mm. Anyway, so it was yeah. really interesting. I huh. have I have great admiration for it because like what you said, it's like people are, are going at a fast clip. You know, mm-hmm. President of the United States, some governor, whoever is giving mm-hmm. a presentation, you know, and there's a person who's doing ASL, you know, at, at basically at a <sighs> cheetah speed. I don't know what the actual word is or regular like playing <laughs> speed kind of thing. Yeah. Um, right. right. Uh, and fast. that's been, I mean, there's, yeah, yeah there's they go just, really fast. And, yeah. And that's always I, been, it, it's almost distracting as a, as an, obviously a non-deaf person when I'm watching, I'm always kind of focused on the sign language because I'm just like, I'm kind of trying to figure out what words mean what sign. <laughs> right. And it's like, exactly. I'm not even paying attention to what they're saying anymore because I'm just like, it's like the, the person says something. And I'm like, oh, I want to know what the sign is for that. I want to see if I can catch it. So <laughs> so do you... So distracted. Here's a question then, um, because I do think that this relates to a similar topic, though a different experience is, do you think that, captions are distracting or subtitles yeah yeah absolutely yeah so does that inhibit you from watching movies that aren't in english or do you subscribe to dubbing only i don't do dubbing i'll read if i have to um the dubbing the dubbing is almost more annoying than the than having to read <laughs> yes um there's a lot of things with subtitles that I dislike, uh, including the size of subtitles. Subtitles always seem to be so tiny. Um, just, I don't understand. Like, can we just like seventy make them font. bigger? Yeah, can we That's, just make them bigger? I want it like this big. But anyway, yeah, I find it completely distracting because I'm just reading. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm like, I forget that there's actual stuff to watch uh, up there. So, yeah, sorry. Again, another long answer to a very basic question. No, no it's no. Well, because I I've found it interesting about the pacing of translation. Um, and this is the thing that fascinated me. So so I would do tours, um, and one of them was at the Brooklyn Grange. It's this urban rooftop farm in in New York City. Um, I think they have almost five acres of land on top of these new these New York City roofs uh, all throughout. So cool. Right now, qu- yeah, Queens and um, and Brooklyn right now in the boroughs, huh. and. Um, Every now and again, they'd give tours, and, and every now and again, they'd give international tours. And what I found, which surprised the heck out of me originally, is that I actually loved working with, with um, translators. Um, because what I realized was, a la code games, or code, sorry, code names, I realized that with similar to code names, once when you realize that it's actually a game, and it's not just simply like, oh, I'm getting nervous, and, and I don't know what to say, and am I going too fast, am I going too slow? Um, mm-hmm. What I ended up, it was fun. Like, I kind of would, like, kind of do this, like, huh, thing, and then pause. And then the person would go, do the thing, do the thing, do the thing. And then they'd stop. Okay. All right. My turn. Okay. And then we continue. And then there'd be Mm -hmm. these moments where, like, I would say a word, like, excruciating. And they kind of go, huh? And then, and then uh, I'd say, um, very hard. Oh, okay. And then they, you know, (laughs) do their, do their thing. Um, but the best, the best part, the absolute best part and i've always thought that that learning a language is sort of like a code to someone's culture and if you can learn it then you learn a lot about kind of what makes them tick mm-hmm. and i'll never forget when i started telling jokes like during because there's you know a few things i i knew would get laughs so i i i hold and and then wait and i know when to pause i know when to when to go in it's just kind of technique and i'll never forget when i told a story it was about the chickens or something and the translator, he's he's looking at me, and I'm I'm talking blah blah blah, and and, and the translator just goes, <laughs> and everyone else looks at the translator like this, and like leans in, and they're kind of like waiting for that, you know, they, yeah. they want to know what the, the, the guy just line. laughed at, right? Yeah. So I didn't just get one laugh, I got two. Um, yeah. So it was like that much more satisfying, but it was yeah. like I figured I <laughs> I fun. felt like I learned their code about like oh I've unlocked the the. The, not just the language key, but the humor key, because that's right. almost as intricate as, as language itself. Or yeah, like, that's interesting. Yeah, you've hit on that twice now, and that's a, that is that is very interesting too. Not only understanding how to say the words, but understanding how to get the responses that you're looking to get. Yeah, it's just a key. It's an aspect of language that we don't really even think about because we do it all the time. Like you're, 
like you're you're constantly telling like, like you and I do this all the time on this show. We we are making jokes because we want to be <laughs> funny and we want or we're making comments because we want to draw a certain reaction out of each other and obviously out of anybody who's watching. We want to make sure you're having a good time. <laughs> what? Yeah, exactly. What? what? Yeah. Uh, I wanted to just kind of wrapping up uh, the whole language conversation. I did want to share. Um, do you know uh, how many languages there are in the world? I'm assuming languages that are alive and not like Latin. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, technically, yeah, yeah. Latin is still used by Act- Latin, active so. languages in the world. Um, I'm going to go between 5,000 and 10,000. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much uh, six thousand five hundred. Nice. Okay, it's very good. Not as many yep, as six thousand. Yeah. Uh, the most popular, at least from whatever website I got this off of. <laughs> Can I take um, a stab at it? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I would think the top three. Um, I mean, I feel like the top three would be probably in this order of at least number of people that speak it as their mother tongue would be Mandarin first, Hindi second, English third. Um, you got the top three right, just not the order. So I, and this, this probably varies depending on where your sources are coming from. The source I got this from has English first, okay, then Mandarin, then Hindi, then Hindi. Okay, yeah, because I I feel like those three in particular, but obviously a big portion of that is less so the, you know, there's not as many countries right now anyway speaking Hindi, but the fact that there's obviously over a billion people that speak hindi in in mm-hmm. a country as the same thing with mandarin um you did mention extinct languages do you know how many extinct language known extinct languages there are a thousand languages uh 573 that's it wow um, okay including that- and i believe this is the most recent extinct language it's called iak which is the lang. it was a language that was still actively spoken in alaska up until 2008 weird Eyak. Eyak, and then it went away. Man. Yeah. That's that's kind of haunting when, when languages disappear. I know I've heard that a lot from, uh, at least in the States, because they, you know, a lot of Native American uh, tribes and such, you know, some of the languages are like bordering on like, I don't know, 300 people, something like that, that mm-hmm. actually know how to speak it. Um, yeah. It's always yeah. a little haunting watching languages go away. All right, we got we got to cover movies before we before we Naturally. end everything. Um, what type of movies came to mind for you as far as communication was concerned, and why why did those movies come to mind for you? All right, so I got four: The Incredibles, Terminator, okay. iRobot, and then Enola Holmes. Uh, the Incredibles, I think, what? is yeah. The Incredibles, we had nothing, and we didn't share anything together as far as this movie. Okay, there's no overlap here. Just saying, so, you know, so these are all. I'm I'm very interested to hear these these okay. descriptions. Uh, the Incredibles, uh, family dynamic, always interesting with communication. I also think that it actually shows a very <laughs> okay. infrequently discussed subject, which is the um, family dynamic in which the drama is not whether the marriage lives or dies, um, which is often told with like like kids' stories about marriages or, you know, whatever. It's it's literally about them having to work out the marriage while saving the world, which I think is such a mm. cool thing that's not often talked about in kids' stories. So communication okay. kind of thing. All right. Um, yeah, Terminator. Yeah, yeah. Um, and actually, I, I changed that uh, my answer not to Terminator, but Terminator 2. So in that one, uh, the, the what is normally the Terminator, which is Arnold uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, he mm-hmm. uh, uh, it becomes a good Terminator, and it's all about the there's this boy in him that learn how to communicate, and you know he's a robot and he's a you know, kid's a kid, a human kid, um, right? So that I think is a really fun way to show that. Um, I Robot, which is the Will Smith uh, title uh, uh, lead title one with um, um, yeah forget his name who plays the voice of, of the, the kid Al, alan tudyk i think is the uh, voice of the robot okay um but it also is very similar in in its sci-fi capabilities about communication because in particular in that story by philip k dick um it's all about um that the robots have certain programming that they can't harm humans and there's certain code embedded mm-hmm. within their systems um mm-hmm. and it's a basically a murder mystery um 
but mm-hmm. Will Smith plays the detective and whatnot. Um, so he has a lot of interesting moments and particularly has to explain about what winking means to the robot. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Which I always loved. Like, he's like, oh yeah, that's, that's what you do between, between friends, between what is friends. And then he has mm-hmm. to like kind of deconstruct like what it actually all means. Um, yeah. And then recently I was very entertained by um, Enola Holmes, which is a, uh, Netflix mm-hmm. film uh, with Millie, that. Yeah. Millie Bobby Brown and Henry Cavill mm-hmm. and Sup- Superman. Um, mm-hmm. And it's all about uh, as if Millie Bobby Brown is the estranged younger sister of Sherlock Holmes. And so mm-hmm. she is she is thrust into a, a, a mystery of, of uh, great daring and et cetera. And, mm-hmm. uh, she has to use ciphers and, and, and try to decode where her mom went and, and that kind of mm-hmm. thing. So all about yeah language and communication mystery which is yeah 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 absolutely um i I had a huge list of 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 these i'm gonna i i I won't go into a lot of detail with any of these but i will list them off because i i like every single one of these as a communication based or a communication focused movie the top of my list was arrival which yeah. was the Ooh, yeah. um yeah 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 this whole story about aliens that are trying to communicate to us and uh this whole concept of like um they'll produce like this ring and this ring is mm-hmm. supposed to be like um they're trying to like they bring in linguists to try and figure out like what this means and they're trying to communicate back and forth and um yeah that whole whole movie was just really intriguing to me is this whole idea of communication and like mm-hmm. what's trying to be commu- what is trying to be communicated and how is it trying to be communicated um and how do we communicate back? <laughs> you know, yeah. it's funny. Like in that, they're like they they're holding up signs like "walking." It says "walking" on the board, and <laughs> there's one person like walking dramatically. <laughs> you know, and uh, it's I mean, it's a very dramatic movie, but it's it's um it's you know it's it's really well done. Uh, it was like one of my walk. favorite movies uh, of that year when it came out. Yeah, it was yeah, fantastic. Uh, it, we've already talked about Imitation Game with the Enigma Machine, yep. um, with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, Lord of the Rings can't. <laughs> I mean, the guy created languages. I mean, one ring to, uh, to bring them all, <laughs> and in the darkness, bind right. them. Um, a beautiful mind made my list too, just because. I mean, code breaking Avatar, um, kind of in the same. In the same realm of just understanding how other other creatures, other beings are communicating mm-hmm. with their god, pretty much, um, and communicating with other creatures. Star Wars, for all of its languages as well. Um, uh, the Terminal with uh, Tom Hanks. Uh, <laughs> the classic line, eat the bite, uh, instead of uh, go, go get a bite to eat. He always says, go get a eat the bite. Um, his whole kind of Tra- uh, you know, his whole struggle with being in uh, an American terminal <laughs> and not speaking the language and trying to figure out how to survive and and live that was, um, it's that's great. Uh, Dances with the Wolves, kind of for the same reason, kind of being thrust into a position where you have to kind of communicate yeah. with, um, you know, di- a different culture and trying to be, you know, and kind of finding yourself between two worlds in a sense, you know, and and two worlds that are not communicating <laughs> very well to each other, no. but you, no. yeah, but you are kind of, kind of in the middle of all that. Um, some other kind of lesser known movies came to mind too. Um, have you ever seen Mr. Holland's Opus? Yeah. Oh yeah. Long time ago. Um, that really kind of came to mind because it's, it's a whole story about a, a musician uh, who turns into kind of this high school music teacher because he's got to pay his bills pretty much. He's got a family and he's a composer. I mean, he's a, he's a kind of a musical genius to a sense. Um, but he's kind of just kind of stuck in this role of being a teacher (laughs) and, um, and then turns out, I mean, not it's been out for a long time, so I'm not spoiling anything. Um, so if if you haven't seen it, just stop now, but (laughs) turns out his, his, his son's deaf and that's kind of, kind of shakes his world up as a father because, he realizes that his he's so, his son won't be able to listen to music. Um, and then the big finale of the movie is him finally connecting with his son on a musical level by being able to portray music and sound through lights and um, and singing a John Lennon song to him with a beautiful boy. Um, 
a great movie, great movie as far as communication is concerned. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it's a long list. Miracle Worker, obviously. <laughs> I guess Helen, the Helen Keller story, pretty much. Uh, it's all about communication. <laughs> um, her parents are just fed, kind of fed up with, you know, not they're worried about that she's not going to be able to communicate with anybody, and they hire a tutor for her to come and teach her how to how to communicate uh, being deaf and blind. <laughs> that has one so. of the most epic revelation scenes I've ever seen when the kid, yeah. when the kid like gets it and, gets and all it, of a sudden yeah. she realizes, oh man, it's the crescendo. Still getting, yeah. It's still giving me goosebumps. If you guys yeah. haven't seen the miracle worker, that's 1940s, 1950s. I think it's one I, of those, I thought it was sixties. Might um, be sixties. Either yeah. way, it, there's a, there's a black and white version. Um, that the ending is so shocking in its um, quality of the kid. 1962. 62, okay. But I think it was black and white. Um, um, yeah, there was, a, there was a moment when, when the light turns on and Helen Keller, and Helen Keller like, who's a 12-year-old at the time, um, who, and again, imagine trying to be able to communicate if you can't hear and you can't see, um, and in a world in which neither of those uh, communities have, were given much, you know, publicity or, or frankly, respect. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and all of a sudden, it's like she gets like the thing that the the teacher is spelling mm-hmm. on her hand mm-hmm. is directly meaning to the thing that she's feeling. And then yeah. there's that moment of she's like, that oh, it has a like yeah. a name. Everything has a name. Um, Mm -hmm. so you watch the kid frantically like scurrying around the yard Mm -hmm. and and dragging the teacher's hand around and being like yes this means this okay what's this okay yes this means this and then you Mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you can tell her brain almost like a light just turns on clicks on yeah and you realize she'll never be the same um yeah so dude great choice i forgot about that i want to rewatch that now yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna end with um, the Miracle Worker. I think that that's a good that's a good movie to end on. Honestly, th- I mean it's a broad topic. There's a lot of movies out there that kind of fit within that <laughs> that realm. Um, I did believe me. I tried to narrow it down, but I movies just kept coming to mind, so I kept I kept making a note of them. Um, it's good movie, but that's though. yeah, that's that's our that's our series, guys, for the month. Yep. That's our series on communication. <laughs> um, I mean that's. Guys, I mean, that's that's how it works. I, I always start off, I mean, especially lately, I mean, I've just been starting off these series thinking, man, are we going to have enough to talk about? <laughs> and we find it. We always for do. Sure. We communicate, yeah. Rich. Always, we always, communicate. we always do. And I have fun doing it. And uh, hopefully it's the it's the same for all of you guys out there, too, that it's it's enjoyable. Um, guys, uh, same, same thing as we say every week. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment. We really hope that you subscribe on YouTube um, and follow us on the app podcast, Spotify, all that kind of stuff. Thanks for watching and listening, guys. Until next time, be happy. Brew happy. And, and game, game on. on. Cheers. You got an empty glass. <laughs> hey, go to the last drop. <laughs>